There's so many stories to tell about this stuff. I mean, where does, where does somebody really start with these images? Um, Alice in Chain kind of came to me out of nowhere um, through Randy Hauser at that point, their management, before Susan Silver and Kelly Curtis took over. Um, it kind of landed on my doorstep. I was shooting bands and shooting stuff, mostly working out of LA. And the Seattle scene was starting to explode, so I came home for it. Um, these guys were making music that was different than anybody else, and especially after what I was going through in LA with big hair bands. And, you know, it's like, okay. Um, so it was good to come back home to Seattle where there was substance, and these bands were creating that substance through their music. Alice in Chain was um, a driving force. Uh, when I first met Randy Hauser, uh, he asked me, could I shoot the band? And to them, to me, they were just sort of another band that I, I need to shoot. And I was shooting bands like, like every day, it seemed like it, along with the fashion work I do as well. Um, so I was like, okay, sure, sure, but I need to see them live. Seeing a band live really helps me connect with the band because it's who they are on the stage and their power and their energy and the moments in between that I love when a singer, after giving everything he has, especially somebody like Lane, who gave so much of himself vocally and in every song consistently all the time. He was such an amazing soul and he had such an incredible voice. He was, to me, one of the greatest voices in rock and roll history and I happened to be able to be with him. I'm more grateful than ever for that. It was amazing. Of course, at the time, we didn't really realize that. I don't know what was going on. So these were captured with that sense of innocence more than through the joy of working with labels and working with their structure and what they wanted from me and how I had to approach the bands. This was more organic, more true to, to how I shoot. And the images reflect that. And I wanted to shoot them very organic in who they were. So when I saw them live for the first time, uh, I was completely blown away by the first song. I was just so taken by them that um, there was a sound I've never heard before, a drive I've never heard before. And so I knew in the next couple of days I had to shoot them. And I was trying to figure out, what, what is my first shot of them? How am I going to shoot this band? Sh also, shooting bands is very can be very difficult, because everybody's trying to, trying to be that person, and yet the singer is that person, that yet you've got to line them all up to where they're all cohesive and is one, because they're a band. And uh, many times I had to deal with Lane a certain way because he's such a powerful front man, he's so beautiful. And thankfully, all, all the, the boys in the band were beautiful men, and I'm, so they're easy to photograph. So the universe was very good to me that way. We think that, that helped. And also very photogenic, very open to doing things. Um, my connection with them was also wonderful, and the re reputation I built with them helped with the images that I created. That was very important. But I wanted to establish those those connections right off with the band, especially with Alice and Jane. I try to do that with all bands, so that there's an intimate place in the images, another dimension to the images, more than oh, rock stars, here we go, you know. I wanted something more, I looked for something more. Um, the reason why the railroad tracks and a lot of the images and railroad bridges in the canals and chain and band shots, um, a lot of that has to do with the sound of their music. Their music is very powerful, very locomotive, coming at you, get out of the way, it'll run you down, but you can't get out of the way because you need to have it because it's so fucking good that you needed to have it. And but at the same time, the music was expansive, and it would, I knew it was going to grow and grow and grow in all the different places they went. And their albums reflect that quite, quite clearly, especially Dirt, especially Dirt. And, <clears throat> and in Jar of Flies as well, what a masterpiece. And that's the place that they grew too. So when I shot them, I wanted to create images that had that expansion, had that place that they were going in places. So the train tracks and the whole railroad thing created that platform for the images for the band. And those were the images out there in magazines and books and so on and so forth. So uh, thankfully I made the right decision to see like in that point. But they also, it's also who they were. 
had a lot to do with who the band was. They were so, so amazing, especially the man. He was such a sweet soul. They are all sweet souls, Mike as well. A lot of these images, um, especially the live ones, are all done in slide film, and that's really hard to shoot live. Nowadays, digitally, uh, you have 50,000 photos you can run through and just show the client the best one. Well, back then, that was an option. You had to nail it on the contact sheets when it came to the label. The label had five or six amazing images on a contact sheet, I think 36 frames, or sometimes 24 frames. It was, it was too important. So um, I photograph differently then than I do now. And it's unfortunate that innocent is lost with digital. But, and that's why I, print, I, I printed these in the dark room, hand did them, because I wanted to be true to the time that I did them, and how the images were created at that time, which, which was very important, very, very important to me. Um, the live, the color stuff is all, of course, digital, because I can't reproduce live film and turn it into, into C41, of course, just or, or Cibacone prints, all that stuff is, is no longer available to us. So, um, those are the only things that are digital. I have a roll, I'll sell you. Uh, oh, you have a roll? You know? have a Oh, really? It's a You never find processing, though. <laughs> no, that's just insane. We're a photo mad at now, but. <laughs> I also want to thank, real quick, my, my incredible family, my mother, who's here, Nancy, for bringing me into this world and giving me freedom to be an artist, become who I became. She gave that to me as a child. I'm forever thankful to her for that. We got to run in the streets as, as children, and it created me, created us into artists, it created us, created a place in me that I always wanted to reach and go go look under things and go see what was there and she let that happen and that came into the images into my art so also as a painter too as well I also paint so thank you mom also want to thank my beautiful wonderful sister right over here Nancy her years of support she gave me a home for a while when I didn't have one uh, some, of, some, some of these images are her support financially. Does she so. have your DNA? <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you, sister. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That's very important to you. Family is huge. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. I can thank you enough. So, Paul, when you were doing black and white, what was your favorite black and white film? Try X or Plus X? I have to ask. Here's, here's what I say to favorites. I don't have a favorite movie. What did you use? <laughs> and why is because I think it puts people in a box and then you're seen as that, only that. And I'm more than that. I'm all these things at one time. And I don't want to be boxed. So I use lots of different films. Now I'm boxed because there's only a certain film available. So I'm, what I'm trying to get away from, I'm right back into it again. <laughs> Interesting how that works in modern era. The choices we no longer have, but we used to have. So let's, yeah, I, I ask. There's, there's a bunch of emotional stuff I could tell you about this too, some stories that, that yes. I, maybe I won't one. say tonight that are kind of hard to do, but um, any questions you guys have about anything, I'll be more happy to answer. Are you an emotionally damaged person? Uh, completely. Absolutely. All our stuff. <laughs> Oh, if you're not a damaged artist, then, then, then you're not. You got nothing. The thing, the thing about Lane and I, thank you for bringing that up, Saul, is, is the haunted. Lane was haunted like I am. Certain Good people boy. come into the world with a haunted. There's a soul part from, of them, and they come up with a certain soul that's haunted. Lane has that in his voice. You hear that scream in him, and it's a deep, deep place. It's another world. It's another place. But so I have this. His, his voice was unique as a rock and roll singer because he, he could echo the dark side in a, in a non malevolent way. Yes. That makes sense. I just have Solace come up and talk because his words are amazing. So thank you. But, and Solace, a dear, dear old friend, and thank you for bringing him, brother. Thank you, thank you. It's, I've had. 
the opportunities to see amazing faces that I haven't seen in years show up, people I haven't met, family members. I'm thankful that they have come here and I can share these moments with them. It makes my heart sing to be able to, to, to have really special moments like that with people. People are, are the most important thing in the world to me. That's why I became a photographer, is to capture the soul of human beings. Our souls are different than who we are, and that's what I reach for, that inner place within, within people. That's what I want to see, because that's what's beautiful in us. That's what we hide. So I demanded that out of my rock stars, my images. I demanded that from them, and I was able to get it, especially with Alice and Chain. That's why there's a lot of Alice and I have that, that beyond connection with them. I had it with Mother Love Bone too, and Andrew Wood as well, but there was something about Alice and Chain. I also had it with Eddie and Pearl Jam a bit, but Alice and Chain was, was, was my band. And Andy so. was pretty deep, though. So. Andy was, poof, yeah. yeah. Long conversations with Eddie. Yeah. A whole lot of long That's conversations. Story. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of so, any questions with anyone? Because I'm running out of talking gas before I start getting <laughs> my issues. I, I want to ask you a question. Where is the mansion that, that you just uh, look at? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So here, thank you. Here, here's the other part of the story that I needed to share is I was my old girlfriend had a house in the Cedar River, and she was a clothing I'm a clothing designer, and um, that's a whole other big story, but. <laughs> Um, where she lived, she lived in this beautiful house in the Cedar River, and right there was another train trussle, which is where all the famous train trussle shots are that you'll see, especially this one of Lane. Yes. Um, and there's a, uh, actually a single one of him doing that. He was very, he's very into the Christ sort of thing, and I always questioned that about him, but I understood, I understood that. And then she was like, he knew where he was going or where he was going to go or whatever. I, I, it, was a, it was a different place. So I just <sighs> sort of let, let him be who he was in the images because Lane was Lane. And, and all of them, I let them be in, in, in the images who they were. But at the same time, orchestrating them in continuity and getting a bunch of wild boys to do that was really hard. <laughs> they fucked with me constantly because the film would have a certain sound to it. And they would wait to the very moment that the film when wine was ready to hit the shutter again, and they would all do funny faces at me. So I would waste a lot of film going through this, and I have tons of images of this. There's actually one in the book of them doing that, and I told them that one day that these images were going to get out, and they would make more bad faces just to fuck with me even further. <laughs> so um, they, there was a lot of comic moments in the photographs as well, along with the stories. So that's kind of, <laughs> I'm telling the story. So anyway, um, <laughs> so in the Cedar River, I would go on the river at night to get inspiration and sit there, burn one, get inspiration. Like, what am, how am I going to shoot these guys? What's next? What do, what do I need to do next? So I go to, to the woods and I go to nature from, for, for those moments because that's where I get them from. Enough. I hang in the woods a lot because I get inspiration from the woods. So I get down by the river, I would hang out down there, and I just kept getting these images of shooting chains right there at the old trussel. Down the road from where my girlfriend lived on the Cedar River, and we lived on this little house right on the river, there was this abandoned yeah. mansion. Yeah. And um, it had a vacant pool in it and stuff. This house is no longer there, but it was incredible. A lot of the images of chains were in there, especially the one that I have, it's one of my favorite that I love, of uh, Lane wearing makeup. And he came up to me that day and said, I want to, I want to wear makeup. I'm like, okay, man, here's, here's the deal, love. <laughs> uh, and he always wanted to challenge me and, that, and challenge the art and push things. And that's what I love about Lane, is he's the kind of musician, he's a quite beautiful soul, but he would push. And he, he did that in his music. He always wanted to push the band and push people because he knew he could reach a higher place. And Lane always wanted to reach that higher place. And I was like that. I understood that about Lane very well because I'm that same person. I want one more. I want that next place. I want to reach it. I want to go find it. I want to know what's in that hidden cupboard. I want to know what's in that jar I never looked in before. I've got to know. And as, a, as an artist, the same thing. Um, so he came up to me and said, oh, I'm going to wear makeup. And I'm like, okay. So. 
trouble with that, my dear friend, is um, you're already so much in the band, already the front man, and already so powerful within the images, now you can put makeup on and really stand out, and how am I going to balance that with the other three members of the band and stuff? But he knew I could do it, so in, in that image, I said, close your eyes for a second. Well, he closed them for a minute because he had makeup in his eyes. That was a shot, that's a shot. So he did it again and shot the image, and that's one of the image over there. So I knew that with the makeup, if he closed his eyes, it would actually work in the image, and it did very well. And that was actually spontaneous. So a lot of the images I would watch you know, for spontaneous moments, like this one, where, of all things, Sean the drummer is in the background, and all three of the front men who are in the front of the stage are in front. I'm, I'm just and here, they're walking down the, down, the, down the tracks like this, I'm like, oh, Look at this. Someone take this for me. And they just have to, Jonas. Like, let's go down the track. And they just have to form like that. So it was really interesting how those sort of magical moments happen with rock and roll. And how that just, just happened. Just like that. So it's a lot, a lot of stuff like that that happened. And, and with Lane doing this as well. What so, year did you start photographing the band? I think the first band I photographed was Dunry and Network. No, what year did you start photographing Alice in Chains? Alice in Chains? Um, 1988, no. I think was the first one. Maybe late 87, 88, I think. It was during the time I was shooting uh, the Network and a few other local bands here. So I think it was right around 1988. They're still playing pretty small shows. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah. I captured all the really early shows. Too, so. Paul, I want to tell you about that <coughs> house they were in. That really wasn't a dump until they moved in. Yeah, no, I know. I saw it, and I say that, and I, I didn't mean that in a bad way, but I saw it before, but then they had to tell you something about it. Well, but anyway, they rented it. I didn't know they rented it. They rented it for me, yeah. And the, no wonder Mike's bedroom was the first one when he walked in the door. Yeah, the first one to the right, yeah. Mike's the first one to the left. To the left, but right. Mike's, our lanes, he cut a hole in his floor Jerry so he could talk downstairs. with Jerry downstairs <laughs> and lay in his bed and they could uh, collaborate. <laughs> I said, you did what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Lane, so I. Uh, yeah, I used to, because the band that's room that's was down. below his bedroom. And Jerry slept downstairs <laughs> because he had a water bed. <laughs> it had to be in the basement. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they when they moved in that house, uh, the toilet was backed up. So we had to get an outhouse. <laughs> and we had to eventually get a, a oh, back in there and dig out the backyard. It was a big plumbing issue. I, I remember. I remember that the bathroom. Like, oh, Maybe God. that's. Mike, Mike and Lane wore the hard hats and they're out there running that machine. <laughs> no, we had when this opened. Um, we had a weird the night of the tr the day before the tribute all of a sudden we had a sewer back up oh, that, that yeah, shot yeah, yeah. in the back room and that's why i couldn't go remember i was like i can't leave because we've got maybe that's <laughs> i was like damn You'll maybe that's that. what it was yeah they had it coming up in the bathtub Oh my yeah. God! Yeah. No, I remember really seeing the bathtub. No, I know. That's, that's why I said that word because I remember seeing those moments and then staying overnight and having to go first thing in the morning. And four that's, guys have to go. It's just like, oh my God! Yeah, I'm sorry, you had to stay overnight there. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I was safe. I couldn't drive home, and they were like, "Okay, Paul." I always had the couch by the window. Yeah, this is what I had, my friend. Oh, hey, I knew I smelled you. Lane put me to bed one night. <laughs> Funny, but yeah, I, I had magical, such magical moments with them. I also had moments with Lane that were hard for me too. So, Paul, have you lived an exciting life? <laughs> I think so. I wanted it more exciting, but a lot more exciting. But, yeah, it's been pretty exciting. Oh, I don't have a question, but I just but I've just been texting with Randy Hauser right now because he's an old friend of mine and he wants me to tell you hello. Tell him I send my love. Yeah, he says the same thing. Tell him thank you. Yeah, okay. I love that. Yeah. And I, I really like want to, I really want to throw this out there because you told me this, and I think everyone else needs to know. You had mentioned to me that there might be one more box of negatives floating around out there in your stuff. Is that true? 
Really? There's some. There's a bunch of yeah. negatives out there that people have taken my stuff. So unfortunately. But you said there. In you think that you might have had one more box in your storage that you haven't been able to track down. Mystery archives, right? Yes. Well, I think there's, I think there's one more. Yes. And I, I mentioned that because I think there needs to be a part two of yeah, Star Yeah, 20 years from now. Yeah. Oh, that's where you're going with this. See? No, we don't want to get that way. No. But yeah, there's, there's a little bit, a few, a few more images still okay. that I haven't that's amazing. let out of the bag. Um, <clears throat> these are, I think, the strongest ones. I think there's a few more that, that are still there, but unfortunately, a lot of a lot of the negatives um, and images were lost through one time through a label situation that I won't get into, and the other time through um, a pipe blowing up in a storage unit when I was living in Los Angeles. And usually, I kept everything in very tight, good, strong plastic boxes. I had to run up from LA, grab stuff for the label, I let the box out. Flew up, flew back that same day within three or four hours because I needed this stuff and it's in film, it's digital, so I had to fly home, get the stuff, fly back. Box was left there, boom, the pipe broke, bye bye everything. Mm. So that that whole bunch was gone, unfortunately. But you know, <laughs> labels. <laughs> so <laughs> seriously, well, in many ways. Do you have any plans for the future that you can share, uh, like the direction you're going? Uh, if there's anything you're planning on doing with this collection? I, I, I don't know that yet. I, I just, like I said, I, having all this put away for 27 years and then bringing it back out, I was on the road as a fashion photographer, living in New York, LA, Miami, Europe. I was gone a lot of the time. So I missed a lot of the later stages of uh, Lane and Allison Chain because I was here. I was called to do other things in the world. As an artist, I wanted to do many, many different things. And there's so many different areas I was attracted to, and I was good at doing things, certain things like fashion, and so I wanted to pursue those as well. So financially, it was a business decision, and I run a business, and that's very important. So this, it's gonna go where it's gonna go, I don't know that yet. I've put it up, and I'm just gonna say, let's see where it goes. Let's see what happens. It would be awesome to have a book of some sort. I really think that if you could get, I know that you've got so many, because I've heard hours, literally, of stories from him that we knew we couldn't do any justice with a whipped up catalog <laughs> from the show, and I really hope that something like a, a book of your stories yeah. would you. be wonderful. I, yeah, there's, I think this is gonna probably be the works, because there's, there's been coming, you know, it's been manifesting itself, because I keep hearing people, book, 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 so, that, you know, just like this, show, 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 and I'm like, okay, it's time, I gotta do this, so. Yeah, I think that's coming next. Most definitely. Cool. Really cool. Be great. Um, any and other questions? There's one question I hear every time someone comes in here. Got it. So I have to ask it. I know what you're going to say, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Is do you have a favorite photo um, from this set? And if so, why? What is it? I don't have favorites. See, I use a favorite. But I have ones that I'm much closer to because of the moments that happened in the images and the stories that are around them. Some of these images, I don't remember them. I don't remember, I mean, I remember them, but I don't remember the moments of shooting them and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, a drug infested life, <clears throat> you don't remember a lot of things and, and that's part of rock and roll, unfortunately. And I was a victim of that as much as everyone else was in it. And so a lot of, a lot of stuff is lost um, within me, but there are certain images, especially when I was printing this after 27 years of not seeing these images and printing them, and then that stuff would come back whoa, in waves. And it was, it was interesting to deal with. Probably the one that makes you cry the most. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All of them. <clears throat> so there, you know, each one has, the, the famous hair shot that's been in a bunch of books and so on and so forth. That's, that's a famous one. I love that shot just kind of because it kind of kind of came together, and, you know. Just, we call that the hair tree shot. Yeah, the hair tree shot. This one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love that one. It's awesome. And it's just sort of. I love of, the way you've got some, the smiles out of Sean. He doesn't smile a lot. Yeah. Sean yeah. had something really cute left to mind. I would do funny things in front of them to get him to do things every once in a while. Because I knew there were little buttons to push, and after knowing them, so I would get I would get reactions out of them. 
dropping my drawers, but, you know, yeah. things like that. <laughs> In the middle of the shoot, they all would laugh. They'd get a big bang out of it. I'm like, okay, click, you know? Stuff that boys do, you know what I mean? It's kind of, in other words, like kind of screw you kind of thing. And we do that back and forth a lot in kind of a fun way with each other. It's like Mike and I go to each other nunchucks quite often. Our manly stuff, we have to do that, so. Um, this image of, of Lane I love, love, probably one of my more favorite live, sh live images of him, just because he, when Lane, being so close to, to, to the vocals, Lane was so powerful in his vocals that he would out overpower the monitors in front of him. His voice was that powerful. He would fill the room with his voice. He almost didn't need this, the, the PA system because he was so powerful. But he would step back for a moment after certain songs and I could just see him engage himself and, and, and quiet himself for a moment and then come back. And this image was that, that image where he pulled away from the mic and just sort of fanned himself for a minute and then come back and give that next powerful performance. So I love that image of him because it's that, it's that quiet moment that he had on stage. Um, there's also a, a shot of Mike Starr right over here at the same moment with the bass where he's just, his head is down and he's just taking that moment to rest. Because Mike Starr was all over the stage as a bass player and dragging that bass around, as a, it's one thing to do that as a guitar player, but a bass player, it's a little different story. And so Mike was amazing at that and his balance. And these guys were all pretty athletic on stage, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Especially Lane, he would, and Mike, they would do stuff it's just like, oh my god. Even, even, even Jerry. You know, so. Yeah.